Up until Einstein's work in the earlier part of this uh, 20th century, the idea was that space is something that we move through, but is itself static, inert. So we can talk about our position in it, uh, how fast we move through it, but the space itself doesn't respond to anything else that's happening. It's a separate entity. After Einstein invented his special theory of relativity, which described the way space and time uh, change as, uh, according to different observers, space is something which is elastic. It can stretch, it can warp, it can wiggle. So you immediately ran into a, even a more elementary problem, which is if the universe is expanding going forward in time, what's going to happen going backwards in time? It will have contracted. And um, eventually it will have contracted to a point where everything we see, uh, all the matter and radiation in space, will have contracted to a point. Uh, that means the temperature and density would have become infinite, and space would have, in some sense, disappeared according to Einstein's mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. This is what we call the Big Bang, or the cosmic singularity. And so it immediately introduced a very uncomfortable idea that space and time have a beginning. And then it led to a second problem, which is, okay, if we imagine it has a beginning, and this is some violent quantum event, then what comes out of this event should be something turbulent. It should be very non-uniform. It should be hotter in one direction than another. Space itself can be curved and warped. But it, the universe doesn't look that way at all. The universe looks remarkably uniform, and space seems hardly warped at all. So, the moment we had the idea of a beginning, we turns out we had to invent a new idea to explain the smoothness that would emerge right after the beginning. So this has forced us logically into, well, the only solution we know if the universe has a beginning is to have a period that we call inflation. Now, how does that work? It turns out that hidden in Einstein's general theory of relativity is a possibility uh, for a form of energy which would have a kind of anti-gravity effect. And if you fill the universe with such a form of energy, it actually causes the expansion of space. So the idea of inflation is that when the universe began, it had a mixture of ordinary matter and radiation, but also this self-repulsive stuff. It took over the universe, smoothed it out through causing this expansion, and then it itself decayed. So we are, in fact, the products of not the Big Bang directly, but really most directly the stuff that came out of the decay of this self-repulsive energy. The, the way the inflationary theory developed historically is that Alan Guth at MIT, first of all, had the idea that if you had this kind of self-repulsive energy, it could cause the universe to smooth itself out. But once it began this process of inflation, he didn't have any mechanism to stop it. So the universe just had this runaway inflation forever. I got interested in maybe finding a way to make this self-repulsive energy to decay. We, in fact, found a mechanism that would permit it to decay. And so the universe could then be smooth and then end inflation. And what period of time did this take? So the inflation would only last around 10 to the minus 30 seconds. But in that time, it would double in size maybe 100,000 times or mm. uh, more. <laughs> this was a critical moment for inflationary theory because after having smoothed the universe out with this idea, we could have destroyed it. The, the predictions could have been horrible for the, these tiny inhomogeneities yeah. that we got. But we found Because you need them, or there'd you, be no galaxies need or stars. Sure. That's right, you need, you need some, but you might worry that you make them too big yeah. or too violent. Yeah. Uh, you spoil the smoothness. Yeah. But instead, we found is you've got a very special pattern of inhomogeneity, of non-uniformity. It's what we need to explain the formation of galaxies.